if you have any questions, please feel free to interrupt. It's not a big deal. And uh, we're just going to go over the technology and how it kind of works in the classroom and how uh, it can be used. And also just kind of what our company kind of as a whole is looking to go towards in the future. But how familiar are you with clickers? I just want you to, to use them, to start using the, the devices and um, kind of get them in your hands and play with them. Um, so I've, I've opened polling here. Uh, you notice at the top there's a, a black box. And that's our Turning Point Anywhere software that allows me to pull the students uh, either anonymous, anonymously or uh, we can link these devices to the actual students. Uh, any questions about the, the actual clicker? I have three responses and I have five people here. So, oh, be yeah, yeah, someone, someone respond here. <laughs> so we have four. Um, so the basic rundown of the actual device, um, they are radio frequency. Um, they can they have a range of 250 feet, so um, you can have it used in large lecture classes. Uh, and on the back, you'll notice underneath the barcode scanner, um, Lisa had mentioned earlier that you can track the students and link these clickers to the individual students. So there's a unique ID underneath uh, that allows you to do this. And then on the front here, we just have 1 through 10 answer choices. So you can have uh, 10 options for your answers with, with any one question. Um, so you can definitely have that. Typically instructors though do four or five. Um, when you, when you get, get more answers then sometimes it, it defeats the point there. So I'm going to close polling and you notice that we have a large graph that shows you uh, what you all answered. So I'm going to delete, show that. So most of you were, were vaguely. So you know. Generally clickers is just ask a question, get the response, and, or the students respond and then you get the responses. So that's the, that's the three, the three uh, concepts to using clickers. Um, it's not a, a complicated uh, system. You just need a good question that your students can answer and then you'll get, get their feedback on it immediately. And so a lot of times instructors, uh, they ask questions in the classroom, they ask for them to raise their hand and no one ever raises their hand. And so this is allowing them to, to get the responses and have everybody respond. Do you have a, a, a lot of success in your class with everybody responding typically? Especially because they get points if they respond and they don't get the help. Yeah. It takes care of that problem. So it, it takes care of that problem. And then a lot of students are shy. And so this is giving them a, a voice and being able to relate to the question and actually participate. And so um, we're kind of making everybody be involved and be engaged in, in the uh, class there. So in your course, sorry this is in the way there, in your course how do you typically instruct? This is kind of what I ask to, to the professors uh, to gauge what software we, we move on towards. Um, so we have, like we had mentioned earlier, the Turning Point software which is the direct integration to PowerPoint. And then we have this software that is a floating application that floats over top of your PowerPoints. It also floats over top of Word documents, PDF files, uh, YouTube videos, web browsers, anything. So this allows you to poll in any environment. I could sit here, I could skip this question and go onto this slide, and I could ask you a question on this slide, on the fly, verbally. So I just want to say, what percentage of students ask a teacher for advice after class? One, 19%, two, 20%, three, 35%, four, 100%. And then now we can verbally ask and, and answer this question in your class on the fly. And and uh, doing a little, some people call peer instruction, where maybe a student uh, poses a good question, and uh, rather than having the instructor just uh, answer that question for them, they're maybe asking them to ask their peers, and having them learn from each other, and making every opportunity in your class a, a learning environment there. So I'm gonna close polling. I only have three, now I have four. So we're participating here, thank goodness. Um, so yeah, oh, only 19% of students ask a teacher for advice after class. So what better than to ask the question, engage them on that question right in real time in class, opposed to 19% of you coming uh, to see you after class with the others not. So they're being, they're being left there. Um, back to seeing those live results, um, students want to see if, they're, um, if they are getting the answers right. Um, if they're getting it wrong, they see that they're not the only ones getting it wrong. And so they can relate a little better to their, to their peers and then also not be so afraid to ask why. Benefits of a student response system. Uh, for instructors, 
uh, there's a few reasons, uh, there's a many different methods of using clickers, but uh, first off, a lot of instructors like to use it for attendance taking. Um, they're a good tool um, to use for that because you are able to link the devices to the student, especially in your larger classes with 100 or more, even some say 40 is a large class. And you don't want to pass around a roll sheet. Some people are going to sign in their friends, and this is a quick and efficient way to do that. So you could, right in the first minute of class, ask, are you here today? And then they'll say yes or no, and either way, you've known that they're there because they clicked in yes, or they were being a smart, um, and, and clicking no. So you can improve class attendance and student participation. Lisa was saying she puts points to every time they click in. So it's encouraging them to pay attention, listening to the topics that are happening, and, and just relate to the questions, answer the questions, and, and be engaged and participate. Identifies student comprehension of content. So uh, you can do a lot of pre and post tests with either one of our softwares, where you're posing a question, seeing what their general knowledge is right at first before you go over the topic, and then after you're done going over the material, ask it again and see where they've learned and if they've actually learned. And um, if, say, 50% get it wrong, 50% get it right, uh, then maybe you need to redo that topic and go over that material again and see if you can get better results. If 80% are getting it right and 20% are getting it wrong, then it may be it's just time to go on to the next one, and then that 20% could come see you after class. Because remember, 19% of students come ask you questions after class. So uh, that, will, that will increase the numbers of, of actually learning in, in the classroom there. Sugar's class discussion. I mentioned a, a method of, of using clickers called peer instruction. And it was actually created by a Harvard physicist, uh, Eric Mejure, uh, who, who came up with this idea. He wrote a book on it, on how to engage students, um, not just being passive, asking questions, them clicking A, B, C, or D. Um, they're asking a question, and they're then having to learn from their students who actually got it right, and being able to share with one another and uh, actually learn from, from each other, opposed to an instructor. His, his quote uh, is, the, the more advanced you are in a subject, the less you are capable of teaching it, uh, in a sense that why are, he's saying, why are these students not getting it? I understand it so well. Why are they not understanding Physics 101? Well, really, he's been teaching physics for 25 years, so he knows it in, inside and out, but now the, 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 the student that just learned it, it's fresh in his mind, and he can relate better with his student, same age, same class, and, and same knowledge base in physics. Tracks student progress. Of course, you can track the student progress throughout the, the entire session, throughout the entire semester, and you can control that data and take it back to Blackboard, like we had mentioned earlier. So it's not just asking the questions, but it's, it's tracking it. A lot of people use it for research because you're getting these results. Sometimes you can ask pretty personal questions and you can make the questions anonymous. So uh, sex ed classes love using our clickers because they can see uh, and do demographics with our software and see how many males have had sex before age 14 or, or how many females have. So they can do personal stuff like that and still be able to have that anonymity and, and students can answer honestly. Any questions on that? There's a lot more stuff that we can go over for instructors. There's, there's probably 25 different teaching methods using clickers uh, in the classroom. And that was just, peer instruction is probably the one that's more widely used uh, among everybody. For the students, I like to say it links, or, or uh, it kind of, the clicker generation. So we have students using iPhones all day, using Blackberries, using iPads, using smartphones and they always want to be linked with something in the hand. They're always having to listen to music while they're walking to class because they can't deal with silent noise. Um, so this is giving them that technology in their hand uh, and not having them Facebook or tweet throughout the class saying this class is so boring. So they're, they're just being engaged and um, they're, they're having this, this outlet in their hand, essentially, that is keeping them in, a, in education, an educational outlet. Engage students in active learning and provide students with the immediate feedback. So like I mentioned earlier, uh, the students see that feedback. They see they're not the only one getting it wrong. Um, but on the other side, they see they're, not, they're getting it right. And so it's building their confidence level uh, in, in the, the learning material. So this is transforming the classroom experience. It's active learning, 
it's understanding, promoting success. There's, there's case studies done on retention rates and how it's improved. The Harvard physicist actually did a study with two of his classes, one using clickers, one not using clickers. And the students that had the clickers improved their, their grades by an entire letter grade. So 10% of their grades was, were improved with the actual use of clickers. So what do you need to actually use clickers? Obviously we need the clicker, the student needs to have this in their hand, but for the instructor there's two essential components. One is the software, so you download the software, we have two different softwares, a turning point which is a direct integration of Microsoft PowerPoint, and the second one is going to be uh, turning point anywhere which is this floating toolbar that's at the, the top right of the screen there. Uh, the other is going to be this receiver. It's plugged into my, my uh, USB port over there and this is the radio frequency receiver that is communicating between your devices in your hand and our software which gives you that immediate graph that shows up. This has a, a response capacity of 1,000 uh, volts so this is actually being used at Arizona State and over a thousand students are in one class so they, they have to use two receivers uh, but they, they don't have any issues and with that capacity, so I, I don't imagine having any issues here. Simultaneous? Yes, all at once. Yep. It's a big class. <laughs> so the, the next there is, of course, the clicker, and then there's some different options that we offer. I know Lisa was really uh, intrigued by the NXT and, and likes that device. Uh, it, it is a little more complicated for the instructor and also the student, um, but with technology, there's always a learning curve. And if you do the simple form, you're, you're limited to multiple choice. Now, I mentioned Cal State, Dominguez Hills chose the NXT, and their reason was it's a device that you can grow into. I mean, you, you're limited to the, the multiple choice with the RFLCD, so there's really not a whole lot you can do once you've mastered using multiple choice questions. But with the NXT device, you now can grow into doing more uh, comprehensive questions where they have to type out a 160 character response. And then the key, like I said earlier, is for the self-paced testing. Eventually, this device is going to eliminate the Scantron. And the Scantron came around in the 1930s, I believe. So it lasted a long time. But this is allowing you to collect that data even quicker. You're not going to have to deal with uh, the machine, the Scantron machines, and that maintenance cost. So as a university as a whole, it's saving the university on paper saving them on maintenance, the assistant that has to run the scantrons and grade the scantrons and take them back to the instructor. Now I'm not sure how, do any of you know how long it takes for the scantron grades to actually be graded and then get back to the teacher and then eventually get back to the student? I imagine it takes a, a, at least a week or two. And so with our devices, they'll actually see the grade immediately after they submit the test. So they'll send the test to our software, it's going to grade it and send them either an instant message saying your grades will be posted to Blackboard uh, by Friday or it will send them a, a percentage grade of, how, of what they got right on the, on the exam itself. The software sends it what, via email or what? The, it's going to send it right to that device, that's oh, that the LCD device. screen on the NXT. Uh, okay. Not the RF LCD, but the NXT will send a, the percentages uh, right on that device screen. So as they're walking out of the class, they know they're grade, they're grade? Oh yeah, yeah, they'll know immediately. Uh, you could crush a student's weekend or you could make it the best. <laughs> yep, yep. That, that could be bad, but a lot of instructors probably will just say your grades will be up on Blackboard by, by Friday or whatnot by the end of the weekend. That way they don't have to confront a crying student in front of everybody. That could cause a, a big mess. Uh, and then the other option there is a receiver, which is uh, this device right here. And um, the way that this typically works is when an instructor decides to adopt clickers as a course material in the bookstore, they get a free receiver so that they, uh, in, in honor of them doing the bookstore model. So the students have to continue to repurchase each of, each of her classes. Um, and then we like to give them a free clicker as well so they can practice before. I mean, you can't do a whole lot with just a receiver if you, and it builds your confidence to know this is what a student's going to do. I know how to use it. And so it's giving them that, um, that training that they need. Now you've probably seen me just been pressing this little button here. Uh, and this is an instructor remote. So what this is going to allow me to do is control my entire PowerPoint presentation. So essentially it's just a PowerPoint presenter like people typically use in, in, in PowerPoint presentations. 
but it's also controlling my software. So I have to typically press the play button at the top left of that, that software. And with this device, I'm just pressing a play button on, on there that opens and closes polling. It also has three programmable buttons that allow me to hide the graph, show the graph. Uh, we have a countdown timer with all of our software, so you can give the students 10 seconds to answer a question and it will automatically close polling for you. So uh, that device is really nice. And for every instructor that does decide to adopt, we give them one of those as well. And so that entire value is around $190. And so um, the idea is to get them just using clickers on every single class. Every instructor. Every instructor would be nice, but uh, yeah, every, and every instructor that adopts clickers in the bookstore will get this free instructor kit is what we like to call it. And you can't do it without that, right? You, you, you can do it without that, yeah. Keyboard. Yeah, you can just... Uh, use the keyboard if you wanted to. That's just a nice little tool for instructors to float around the classroom. Yeah. Not everybody likes to be sitting at their presentation dock there the entire class. And so this allows them to float around uh, and, and move around the class. So let's see if I can show you the, the countdown timer here. That's a, that brings up the graph here automatically. So this is one programmable button that I have here. Uh, then there's the countdown timer there. I pressed my middle program button. Uh, you can uh, change that to 15 seconds, 20 seconds, whatever you want. Um, 30 seconds is kind of a long time to ask a question and have them answer. Um, but if you notice there on the, on the right of that little box, we have a pause button, an add time, and a subtract time. So you can, if someone brings up a good point, pause and, and kind of illustrate that point that he's making. But once it gets down to, to zero, it's automatically going to close polling and give you that result immediately. So it does it all for you, and then you, you don't have to be tied down to your computer. So here are the software options that we offer. Turning Point Anywhere is the, the polling application that pulls over top of anything. Um, it's Mac compatible and PC compatible. Uh, by April, all of our software, every single one of them, is going to be compatible for both Mac and PC. Now, right now, there's only one software that's not compatible with Mac, and that will be compatible in April. And that is the turning point, which is the native to PowerPoint integration. A lot of people like to use it. Uh, it is very clean. I wish I could show you. I, probably, I could show you on my laptop, actually, after, after this is formally over. But um, it's just a built-in add-on into Microsoft PowerPoint that allows you to insert a click of question throughout any point of your PowerPoint presentation. And then once you advance your slides, it's automatically going to open polling. And, and put that histogram right into the, the uh, software as an animation. Mm -hmm. So it, it's very streamlined and clean uh, and, and very professional. And it's, it's, that'll be available in Keynote as well? Uh, not Keynote. Uh, Keynote is a, a Mac application that they control uh, solely, so we have it integrated with that. I don't think we probably will ever integrate with that, just but to be PowerPoint honest. PowerPoint for Mac. But PowerPoint for Mac and yeah. PowerPoint for PC, yes. Yeah. And you probably don't want to use the 2004 because it's, it's generations and generations old. And so once that comes out in a few months, it's going to be, it's going to be really up to date and it's going to be really nice. Yeah. Yep. And then you'll notice over on the right we have something called a response card anywhere. And you're probably wondering, what the heck is that? And I will show you. So essentially, not all classes have a smart station, have a desktop that has a projector. And what this is going to allow an instructor to do is gather results from a single receiver that is called the response card anywhere. So if they don't have uh, the presenter or the, the desktop or a laptop even to come to class, a lot of people use it in labs or out in the field classes, you can still pose questions, ask questions throughout the entire uh, in a lab or whatnot. So the cards will respond directly? Yeah, the, the, the cards will respond directly to that device. And then uh, on the LCD screen on the response card anywhere, it will show a visual graph for the instructor. So you can get those real-time results still with that device as well. Do instructors who adopt this also get that? Uh, they will not get that just because not a lot of people use it, to be honest with you. It's for the lab, for the field, for field stuff. Um, it is only $99, so they're more than welcome to purchase that. Um, but they do not get that with the uh, instructor kit. Yeah. 
So here are the, the four devices, I guess you would say. Uh, the RF, which is the ones that you use currently through the bookstore and I believe what Lisa is using. Um, and that's basic one through 10 multiple choice. And then the one to the right of it is the response card L, uh, RF LCD. Now we first came out in 2003, that's when our company was invented, I guess you would say, but that's the RF device is what we started off with. Now about two years ago we came out with the RF LCD, so uh, seven years went by before we really even changed anything, but you can still use the RFs from back in 2003 area. So there, we don't do a lot of change, a lot of people are worried, well will I have to purchase another one in two years? Uh, we make everything backwards compatible so that we make sure we cover our bases with the older devices as well. And so the difference, the main difference is that RF LCD screen, uh, which has answer confirmation. Students like that when they're doing a pop quiz or they're taking attendance, they want to see that visual confirmation that their answer was confirmed and was submitted and the teacher received it. So that's what that is uh, mainly there for, but you also have a battery indicator uh, that allows you to know how much battery time is left. Uh, and each device with the RF and the RF LCD take lithium coin cell batteries. So you can find those locally uh, wherever for a few dollars to, to replace those. But they usually last about a year, uh, depending on the amount of use, of course. Now I mentioned all these are radio frequency, so there's also a, a channel indicator. Now on each device you can reprogram them to a different channel, uh, and that's mainly done because the 250 foot radius that it has. Now if there's an instructor in one class, using clickers and then another one right next door you have to change the channel so you don't mix uh, the responses between one another because that could be an issue. Um, so it's a simple step on the devices you have you're just going to press the channel button at the bottom left and then the corresponding channel number so if you wanted to change it to 43 you could press 43 and then the channel button again. So it's a simple process that a, a, a middle schooler could do. So uh, it's not that complicated they're just changing the channel there. And then of course each receiver needs to be changed with the channel also. So they would do that through our settings options in our software. So uh, there we go. Um, the NXT device, we went over that. Um, that is $40. Um, the, the RF LCD is $32 and the RF is $28. So those are the pricings of, of the devices. And then the bookstore, uh, when they offered, I just spoke with them earlier, and uh, they do do a buyback that is relatively half off. So the cost uh, begins to get lower and lower once they, they continue to use it in all the other classes as well. If they're using it in four classes and say that the device was $20, then it's $5 per class. But if you use it in more than four, it's getting lower and lower. So the cost is, as long as we can share that with instructors and have them understand, look, the end total cost is going to be $15 if it's just used in your class. If you're using other classes, then it could get down to $2, whatever. So prices. Uh, is not a, a whole lot for these devices with the gain that you can get from them. Now you see over here we have an iPhone and so this is uh, something we offer called Responseware uh, that allows students to use any web enabled device. So we have an app for an iPhone, we have an app for a Blackberry and an Android device and of course we have one for the iPad and the uh, iPod Touch. And what this is going to allow students to do is register their phone as a clicker, a virtual clicker. Uh, it does have to have a good, a very good 3G or Wi-Fi network in the area, in the classroom that you're using, where you will experience drop calls or drop signals just as you would with drop calls. Do you have good signals? I didn't think so with, that, with those faces. <laughs> so um, that may be something you just want to nip in the butt real quick so students don't say, hey, I just bought this virtual clicker. Can I use it in your class? And they paid $9 and they can't use it. So. Um, you may want to just communicate with that with the instructors that horrible connection on campus, let's just not use it and deal with the headache. But it is an option there, of course. So the app is $9? Uh, the, yes. The, essentially, it's going to be $9. The, the app is a free download. So you could go download it right now and look at it. But you cannot use it as a clicker. You have to purchase the rights to use it, which is $9, and that's a license you would buy from our website. And I think that's all there, yeah. So thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What's the question mark for? The question mark is, that's a good question. <laughs> no pun intended. Uh, but if you notice here, actually you're not going to notice on this software, but uh, on the turning point software, there's a tab at the very top that throughout your presentation says feedback. And so when a, a student presses that question mark, it means that someone in your audience 
uh, has some feedback, has a question uh, that they would like to pose to you, and then you can kind of stop your, your class for a second and briefly uh, see what the question is. Unfortunately, it does not tell you who asked the question, uh, but that doesn't seem to usually be a problem when they can just verbally say, hey, who had a question? So that's what that, that uh, button does for you. Now, if you're taking a test in your classroom and you've got questions one through 10, and it doesn't really care what slide's up there. It, this thing doesn't care what's up there. It only keeps capturing the response, right? It's, it's going to capture the response when you open polling. So when open I tell polling, the software to open polling. Whatever slide you want, it doesn't care what slide it is. You get, tell, it, tell students to answer one through blah, 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 mm -hmm. and click it. So that will be response number one. And this, is, this is how it's going to upload, right? Mm -hmm. The grade. It's not going to, is it going to capture each response for each question, or is it just going to capture a total? It's going to capture each response for each question. Now, with the RFLCD device, um, and the RF, you ha it only lets you answer one question at a time. So you can't put up, you can't give them a sheet of paper and say, answer these questions while I have polling open. Mm -hmm. You have to do it synchronized. One question, go to two questions, go to three questions. With the NXT device, um, you're going to pass out the entire test. So you'll have 50 questions on it or whatnot. And then they, at their own rate, do answer the questions um, at, their, at their own self-paced. Mm -hmm. um, so they can do it the entire time polling is open. Uh, but that, that is the, the main difference between the two. Is one, you have to be synchronized. One, you can be e asynchronized and do it at your own rate. Now, when I saw Lisa do it through her computer, she had like a total score that she was uploading mm -hmm. to Blackboard. Where does the um, response for question one go when and stuff is, it goes into her computer and yeah. software and shows for each student? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, every time they click, um, beforehand, when you prepare for the class, you're going to give each question a certain amount of points. So you can give them two points. You can give incorrect points so that you're giving them participation. You can give two for correct, one for incorrect, just so they mm -hmm. get some kind of participation point. And then um, that's going to track throughout the entire class when they, they answer every question. And at the end, you just you upload that into Blackboard and but, but it will read the grade. But it's not going to say, okay, you answered question number one this way. You answered question number two. It, yeah, it will. Yeah. Um, it's not going to put that in Blackboard. In Blackboard, it's no. just giving you that numeric response uh, and the, the final total numeric grade. Uh, but you can view in all of our softwares reports that show you um, which one they actually yeah, clicked. Okay. Yep. But you have your own uh, login, like your own homepage. Um, how do you access those reports? Uh, just within our software, there's some, some in our settings, and you can find reports. Um, you're not having to log into anything. Uh, you just make sure you save that session. So the session is the class period and everybody that clicked in. As long as you save that, you can go back uh, and review it later. With our Turning Point software, which is our, our integration with PowerPoint, it actually puts the reports. We have 32 different reports that you can choose from, and it puts it into Microsoft Excel for you. Mm -hmm. So there's not a lot of movement of, the, of everything. It does it right for you. So you said there's 25 different teaching methods. So do you have, is there, do they actually have that? Yeah, yeah. Right? I, have, uh, I have a document I could send you that um, shows you uh, what it's called, kind of how they use it, and the objective of it. And it's a good tool. And Google. Google allows you to do a lot of stuff. And it has a lot of research just on the web to find how they use clickers. Uh, YouTube videos, there's instructors that actually record their, their classroom sessions and so you can visually see that. But I can definitely send you the documents for, for the best methods of using clickers. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you guys for your time. I appreciate it very, very much. Thank you.